Hey guys, welcome back. So let's talk about Invincible for a little bit because quite a few of you guys have been hit me up on social media asking me if I've seen the trailer with it coming to Prime Video in 2021 and even asking me what I think so on and so forth and first I want to say yes I saw the trailer and secondly as far as what I think it's going to be insane but also prior to this point like for months a few of you have been asking me to do videos on Invincible and at first I kind of just made note of it like I'll check it out but then most prominently Gavinci and I apologize if I'm not saying your name right but he would just keep hitting me up and he was like you've got to talk about invincible and so uh, then i was like all right i looked it up on comiXology which is you know amazon and i'd read like 20 something or 30 issues and man like this story is insane and he had also mentioned that the show was coming and i think i've heard some things about a film as well but after then seeing the trailer which is much just like the comic i had to start this conversation on this channel so thanks to gavanchi and the rest of you guys or jivanchi i don't know i'm saying it right but thanks to you guys i checked it out and i just wanted to share my thoughts to the rest of the spillmongers on who is invincible and why i'm so excited for this show so let's get into it but first if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week and don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so for the most part, with us getting into our talk about Invincible, I'm gonna be referencing the first 20 some odd issues that it premiered back in 2003, when its standalone series begun, coming from the writer and creator, Robert Kirkman, who's more commonly known today for his series, The Walking Dead. But prior to the Invincible series appearing in 2003, he had also shown up in Tech Jacket number one, but I'm mainly gonna be referencing his series which started in 2003, which I feel like I kinda gotta give the disclaimer that it may be spoilers for the show, because at this point we really don't know how close they're gonna follow to this story, which from the trailer it looks like it's gonna be pretty close, and with season one being like eight episodes, according to IMDB, like I don't know how far they're gonna go into his story before like the first season finale. So I just wanted to put that out there, possible spoilers, just wanted to let you guys know. But all right, so getting into Invincible, which focuses on this kid by the name of Mark Grayson, and the tone is very Spider-Man slash Superman with the, the last name of Nightwing. And not to mention like throughout the story, there's a ton of parodies to other characters from other properties that are super intriguing as well but we'll get to that. But in the case of Mark Grayson, when he was a kid around the age of seven, his father Nolan Grayson had told him that he was from another planet by the name of Viltrum and that because of that, Mark, who was born here to a human mother, he may or may not eventually have powers because of his unique physiology and at the age of seven, it was kind of hard to tell like which way that would go. And with his dad having powers and operating as the hero, Omni-Man, he just wanted to let his son know this because possibly at the age of 13 or around the time of male puberty, these powers Powers may start to show so he kind of just want to give his son the heads up that he might be like his dad someday and it's funny because at the time the only part that really caught Mark's interest it was like the part about him flying and like a kid at the time that's like all he cared about but then also his father gives a bit of backstory about the planet Viltrum their people and his journey to earth before becoming Omni-Man and as his father describes like back on Viltrum it was a very peaceful planet to where all the other citizens had powers just like his father but as a people they had also reached a perfect global society there there was no illnesses, no war, no crime, like it was a textbook utopia. And at one point, the High Council of Viltrum, they had proposed the idea that they should share this perfection with other worlds rather than just keep it to themselves. And this decision was agreed upon through the council unanimously. And this decision then brought about the World Betterment Committee of which his father would later join. And this committee would search for other planets and determine whether they could use their services or if their people were just so far gone that there was no turning back. But if they had seen that a planet had the potential to reach their perfection, they would give this planet a global defense system and then leave a group of scientists on that planet to see through to the advancements of that civilization. Almost like the origin of the Watchers in Marvel Comics until they messed it up. And they was like, you know what? We're gonna stop trying to help people. We just gonna watch. But after some time for the people of Viltrum, like this became a very popular profession. Profession. And three years after Mark's father had joined, he then discovered Earth, which he then studied from afar. And because he was so impressed on what humans had achieved in such a short amount of time, he then pleaded with the council to allow the committee to enroll this planet. But his request was denied because they had deemed Earth to be too crude and far too underdeveloped to be considered for the program. And that's when Mark's father suggested that he just go himself rather than a whole team and be Earth's sole protector and oversee the survival of the civilization, which the council was also hesitant of, letting him know because of the distance, there's a small chance of him being able to return, but Mark's father took the chance and came to Earth anyway, to where he then became the world's hero known as Omni-Man. 
But after hearing all of this from his father, Mark, he didn't get his powers at the age of 13. And like at first his mom would try to make him feel better, like, oh, it's okay, son. Like, it's okay if you're normal, if you don't have powers, like it's fine, that's not a bad thing. But for Mark, who was super excited about this from the age of seven, like he was ready for it to happen. But as he got up in his teenage years, he was like, well, okay, maybe it's not gonna happen. But eventually when he had turned 17, he was working at this burger spot. And one day he was taking out the trash to where he tossed the trash completely over the next building. And it was from there that he knew that his powers were coming in. And when this happened, like he didn't waste any time jumping into action. And not long after, he even made his own suit, which was really just a bandana, some dishwashing gloves, and some sweatpants, which is all he could really put together at the time, but he was just ready to get into action. But two weeks after this, his father finds him out there fighting crime, and he kinda hits him with the what are those? <laughs> because the costume, it, it is ridiculous. But then it's here where his father takes him to his tailor to make him a suit, which initially is different than the suit we would later see Invincible in, but this would then change over the course of time with him shadowing his father and then learning how to use his powers. And I gotta say, like in the trailer, when I'd seen them playing catch and his dad throwing the baseball around the planet and Mark catching it, I was like, okay, they're sticking to a lot of accuracy here. But even with that, the part that they didn't hint towards, which is why I feel like it's definitely gonna be in the show. Because going through the comics, like what happened in issue seven, like, it changed everything. But it's also what made Invincible so freaking good. And once again, at this point, I'm leaving some stuff out, leaving a little bit to mystery, but we are talking about this big twist because it is undoubtedly my favorite part of the series so far. Because eventually we come across this group called the Guardians of the Globe, and they are clearly like the version, like the Justice League within this series. And they got their own version of Batman who's called Darkwing, and like these parodies are anything but subtle because he even has a butler called Belvedere who he reaches out to like Belvedere, contact the authorities. And just from the way that he fights crime, leads from building tops, has different gadgets, he has a jet wing, and you can very much tell that Darkwing, much like the other members of the Guardians of the Globe, which the name of the team itself sounds like another team, but you can very much tell that these are like intentional parodies. But aside from Darkwing, you then also have War Woman, who's clearly like their version of Wonder Woman, but with a costume that in my opinion has more of a fourth world type of inspiration but in this team you also have Aquarius who's like their hero from Atlantis and then you got Martian Man who's like your Martian Manhunter, Green Ghost who's like your Green Lantern but even still their powers and abilities aren't like your one-to-one -one. but the parody of it is clear as day but then you also have the leader of this group who's called the Immortal who in my opinion like he reminds me of both Marvel and DC because he kind of looks like both the Eternals with a bit of new god fashion going on and it completely makes sense with both being Jack Kirby's creation and I feel like in the Invincible series with the Immortal Cory Walker was kind of just giving a nod to that with illustrating this design with that influence. But either way, when we get the introduction to the Guardians of the Globe, oh, and they also got their own Flash too, and he's a speedster by the name of Red Rush, so there's that. But when we get the introduction to the Guardians of the Globe, to where they're all called to this emergency meeting, to where initially they had thought that the Immortal had called for them all to meet him there, but when they get there, they find out quickly that it wasn't him. And before you know it, like all these guys are just slaughtered. Grand opening, grand closing. Because before they can even figure out who had truly started this meeting, they're taken out just like that, and we come to find out that it was done by Omni Man. And I'm telling you guys, like, this is the moment where the story just got nuts. Because when Omni Man did this, Mark didn't know. And after this Omni-Man just continued with everything like nothing ever happened. But a month later Mark would find out when the Immortal came back for Omni-Man because he's immortal. But when he had came back for Omni-Man they had gotten into this huge fight which had then caught the attention of the news which then of course led Mark to go out and help his dad. But when Mark got there he had got there just in time to see his dad punch a hole through this dude's stomach and chop him in half with his bare hands. And I mean of course he knew his dad could but the fact that he did. And Mark would describe like that shock as like an out of body experience like he just couldn't believe what he had saw. But then it's also here with Nolan, or Mark's father, Omni-Man. He tells Mark that his origin, his history, like all of that was a lie. And it's here where he tells Mark the true purpose and the reason why he's here on Earth. And it's here where we get the true history of Viltrum, which did achieve a perfect global society, but it wasn't until after the stronger people of the planet eliminated all the weak, which then knocked down their population to like 50%. But even still, that 50% was like the strongest of the strongest. But years later after this, they then built their society on top of this ideal, which then became the structure and the foundation of their beliefs, to where then they set out to make Viltrum a planetary empire, of which the council agreed upon unanimously which then brought about the creation of the World Conquering Committee, 
not the World Betterment Committee. But for here, they then searched for other worlds whose defenses weren't too strong, but even still their planet had enough intelligence or potential to advance to the level that they saw fit. And after selecting a planet, they would monitor it from afar for a short while, and then send a team or a group down to it to where then they would announce their takeover. And if the natives complied, then the people of Viltrum would share their technology with that planet's natives but doing so under the rule of Viltrum. But in the case for the planets who were selected who did not comply, they were just pretty much eradicated. But also over the course of time, they enlisted the services of planets that they had conquered in order to expand their army and increase the speed of growth for the empire. And in the case of Nolan, this is around the time he became of age to join the conquering committee. And initially when he started, he was assigned to finding planets, but most others his age, they were out there on the front lines. So naturally he desired a more hands-on position. So then he auditioned for like three years before he was then promoted to the forefront of the expansion effort. But the crazy thing was like with the Viltrumites, the older they get, the slower they age, which explains why Mark, as a kid growing up, he aged at the rate that he did. But with keeping that in mind in the case of his father, like when he went out and conquered these different worlds, some invasions would take 100 days, some would take 100 years, but the Viltrumites always had seen success and much of it was credited to his dedication and as a result he received many promotions and awards but after a period of time the reach of expansion had stretched their numbers thin and for that reason they then had to find a more efficient way to conquer planets which then included them sending one surveyor out and after spending 500 years on that planet he would then be allowed to come to the determination of whether that planet was suitable for invasion but it was then when he arrived on earth and he met Mark's mother and after meeting her early on this is when he came up with the story that he had told Mark as a child and over over a period of time with him posing as a hero, he had then quickly met the Guardians of the Globe, of whom he didn't join but he did make a name for himself amongst the superhero community, to where even at the time he had become close friends to some members of the team. But after Mark was born, he then was torn with the idea of whether he should raise him as a human or take him somewhere secluded and raise him in the ways of the Viltrumites. But no one couldn't pull himself to do the latter because he had fell in love with Mark's mother, so he had then decided to raise his child as a human. But then fast forward to more recently, when Mark's power started to manifest, it's here where Nolan then took it upon himself to take the first step towards conquering this planet, which was weakening the Earth's strongest defenses, which of course were the Guardians of the Globe. And as you can imagine, Mark didn't take this too well. And of course, with him being born and raised on Earth, and not to mention of a human mother, and on top of that, lied to about everything. But with hearing this truth, this is what then stirred a heated conversation between Mark and his father, which from there then led into like your Snyder cut Man of Steel type of battle. And of course, with the exception of the snap neck. And I would even go as far to say like back in the early 2000s, like this fight was even crazier because it was more than in just like one city. And through the course of this fight, they were literally fighting like around the world. But of course for Invincible, like Mark, this wasn't a fight that he was about to win. But the thing that got me like after his dad beat the brakes off him, which at this point then took the fight to like the other side of the world. But it's here where his father asked him like 500 years from now, like everything that you're attached to and all that, like it'll be gone. And when that time comes, like what will be left for you to hold on to? And when Mark replied and he said, you dad, I'd still have you. I was just like, oh my god because that line was just so powerful and it's crazy because his dad it, it hit you can tell like it hit him like he felt that and right when you think that he's about to finish his son he just takes off and it's a heavy moment because then you see his father like flying into space tears in his eyes and it's like man nothing's gonna be the same from here but i think i'm gonna leave it right there for this one like if you guys got any questions or or want more videos like let me know in the comments or you know or we can have more conversations on discord i got an image channel up now and so i'm excited to see what's gonna land in there but i just want to let you guys know that i am excited for invincible and even how when mark's father left mark then met cecil who he describes as the spooky government guy who had then taken mark to a secret base like under the pentagon because that was the only place where mark could be treated for his injuries but prior to this cecil was like omni man's guy in the chair and he had actually helped omni man back at the time with creating his human identity but after omni man left it's from here we then begins to help Mark. But like I said, I think I'll just keep it to a brief minimum for this one and give a bit of the general backstory for Invincible, but I do very much believe the show is going to be crazy. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the Patreons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below to where you can go to patreon.com slash dopespill. But that'll do it for this one guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, let me know if you're interested in Invincible, and if not, that's cool too, but that'll do it for now, and we'll do it again on the next one. Alright, later.